Welcome to CSC Guru. Today we will discuss about the topic non preemptive priority scheduling. Already we have discussed about the topic priority scheduling. If you are considering the process along with the CPU time and the arrival time, there are some preference we will assign to the process early in order to differentiate with the other process. Because those process should be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution early compared to the other processes. So these preference may be in the form of CPU burst time or priority. The preference based on the CPU burst time is called the SJF algorithm. That algorithm already we have discussed. And here priority is nothing but a priority number is assigned to each process along with the CPU burst time. Based on the priority number, the particular process will be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution. To better understand the concept of priority scheduling, the priority scheduling we can compare with the hospital scenario. In hospitals, the normal patients will book an appointment and they will visit the doctor based on their appointment. Suppose, if there is an emergency case, the hospital administration will admit the patient immediately and they will start the treatment immediately. This is the difference they will show to the normal patients and the emergency patients. Similarly, in priority scheduling, the priority actually shows the difference between the normal process and the preferential process. The preferential process will be assigned the highest priority and those process should be executed with the CPU early compared to the other process. The process with the highest priority will be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution first. The highest priority represents the process with the lowest number. For example, the, prior, the process with priority 1 represents the highest priority and the process with priority 2 represents the next highest priority. So, in the ready queue, if a process is having a priority with the number 1, that particular process will be selected first and assigned to the CPU for execution. Suppose, if, the, if more than one process is having an equal priority means, in that case, FCFS scheduling algorithm will be implemented. And already we know that there are two types of priority scheduling. One is non-preemptive priority scheduling and preemptive priority scheduling. Now, we will discuss about non-preemptive priority scheduling. Non-preemptive priority scheduling is nothing but once the process is assigned to the CPU for execution, till it completes its execution, it will not leave the CPU. That is, we, we will not suspend the executing process for any other reason. So, the particular process, once it is assigned to the CPU, that process will complete its execution and then only it will leave the CPU for next process. That is nothing but the non-preemptive priority scheduling. Now, we will discuss the non-preemptive priority scheduling with example. Consider the following four process with the length of the CPU burst time given in milliseconds. And along with the CPU burst time, arrival time is given and also the priority number for each process is also given. And here, we need to find the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. First, we will construct the gang chart and we will find the completion time. And if you are considering here, there are four process with the arrival time and the priority. So, whenever the arrival time is given, we should be careful in choosing the process. Because at that particular time, whichever process it is available in the ready queue, for those process only we have to do the comparison and select the process. So, if you are considering here, the process P1 arrives at the ready queue at 0 millisecond. And if you are considering at that particular time, only the process P1 will be available in the ready queue with the priority number 4. But there are no other process. So, initially, we will choose the process P1 and assign to the CPU for execution. Process P2 will be available in the ready queue at the time of 1 millisecond only. So, the gang chart, the CPU execution will start with 0 millisecond. And initially, the process P1 is the only process in the ready queue. So, the process P1 will be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution. Since this is a non-preemptive priority scheduling, 
until process P1 completes its execution. It will not leave the CPU for other process. So the burst time for process P1 is 7 milliseconds. So process P1 will execute for 7 milliseconds. So by the time the process P1 completes its execution, all the process that is within 4 milliseconds only, the remaining process will be available in the ready queue. We need to compare the three process in the ready queue that is process P2, P3 and P4. Since this is a priority scheduling, we have to compare with the priority number. So we already know the process with the highest priority will be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution first. The highest priority process is represented by lowest number. So if you are considering the process P3 with the priority number 1 is the highest priority process. So next we will choose the process P3 and assign to the CPU for execution. And the burst time for process P3 is 3 milliseconds. So 7 plus 3 it is 10. So next if you are considering in the ready queue process P2 and P4 will be available with the priority number 3 and 2. So comparatively process P4 is having the highest priority. So choose the process P4 and assign to the CPU for execution next with the execution time 2. So 10 plus 2 it is it is 12 milliseconds. And next only one process will be available in the ready queue that is process P2. So select the process P2 and assign to the CPU for execution. The burst time for process P2 is 4 milliseconds. So 12 plus 4 it is 16 milliseconds. And if you are considering this gang shot, this 0 represents the starting time for process P1 and 7 represents the completion time for the process P1. So process P1 completion time is 7 milliseconds. So completion time is nothing but the time when the process completes its execution with the CPU. Process P2 starting time is 12 milliseconds and the completion time is 16 milliseconds. And for process P3 completion time is 10 milliseconds. And for process P4, completion time is 12 milliseconds. Next, we need to identify the turnaround time and the waiting time. Turnaround time, we can find with the formula completion time minus arrival time. Completion time is 7 and arrival time is 0. So for process P1, 7 minus 0, that is 7. And for process P2, 16 minus 1, 15. And 10 minus 3, it is 7. 12 minus 4, it is 8. Next, we need to find the waiting time. So, the waiting time is nothing but how long a particular process waits in the ready queue before it is assigned to the CPU for execution. The waiting time we can able to calculate with the formula turnaround time minus burst time. So, 7 minus 7. It is 0 milliseconds. That is the process P1. When it enters into the ready queue, immediately it is assigned to the CPU for execution. So its waiting time is 0. And for process P2, if you are considering, it is 15 minus 4. It is 11 milliseconds. And for process P3, it is 7 minus 3. It is 4 milliseconds. And for process P4, it is 8 minus 2, that is 6 milliseconds. Next, we need to identify the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. Average turnaround time is nothing but sum of the turnaround time of all the process divided by number of process. So, the sum of the turnaround time of all the process is 37 and number of process is 4. So, it is 9.25 milliseconds. The average waiting time is nothing but sum of the waiting time of all the process divided by the number of process. So sum of the waiting time is 21 divided by number of process is 4. So answer is 5.25 milliseconds. So the average waiting time is 5.25 and the average turnaround time is 9.25. So 
in this session we have discussed about the non preemptive priority scheduling that is once the process is assigned to the cpu for execution till it completes its execution that is till the burst time gets over it will not leave the cpu and in the next session we will discuss about the preemptive priority scheduling thank you for watching this video